Hey, you're looking for the ideal dust collection solution? Maybe you have a shop vac in, in your shop or in your workshop, your basement, in your area, and you're looking away for a way to make that uh, the most useful tool that you can for dust collection. Or maybe you have a dust collector and you just want to make the best of your shop vac. So when you need something that's portable, I'm going to show you how to overcome the three primary obstacles that most people have for their uh, shop vac that make it far less desirable to use as a primary dust collection system. The right features, you can make an effective dust collection system with just that shop vac that you have today. So stay tuned. We're going to cover that now. And if you keep watching to the end, you'll see the bonus features that we incorporated that are really going to take up the shop vac cart to the next level. So make sure you watch to the end and see the bonus features that we incorporate. So let's get to it. If you like what you see in today's video and the information we covered, and you want to see more information, don't forget to hit the thumb and like. That way you let us know that we're doing the right information, covering the right topics in our video and subscribe that way if you hit the bell you get notified each week of all the woodworking knowledge and topics that we bring to you if there's anything else you want to see make sure you leave it in the comments down below let's get into it welcome back to woodcrafting place we talked about chop axe today see here uh, this was my first go round it's we have our bigger shop vac which included we built the vortex and we'll explain that and we learned a lot about this most of you have probably already seen our muffler. So lessons learned, how we incorporated the vortex, and of course an important lesson learned is it's a bit challenging moving it around the shop. So we're going to take this up a notch. Starting with the base, I'm using some 3 8 inch sanded plywood and some 2 by 3s I had lying around the shop. A little heavier duty than they need to be, but they'll do. I also found out the big box stores now sells 2x2s and 8 feet. It's really handy and it's all held together by spack screws and glue because I really don't plan on taking this thing apart. Let's go a little faster. I'll swap between my table saw and my miter saw to cut lengths and widths. It really helps improve my time in the shop. Notice the spaces on the sides of the base. These are pretty important for operation of the shop back, so keep those in mind when you build your unit. Just starting out, check out the video above for our latest drill recommendations to find out why we selected the Ryobi drill you see here. Alright, we're done with the frame and you can see here I probably have it a little heavier duty than it absolutely needs to be. So you can see here I've got two cavities. The bottom is for the the shop vac and the top is going to be where we put, we'll grab this, our collection buckets and that'll be the area that needs to be accessed most often and you'll find out how we make that happen. Now what we're doing to battle, really it's the first real um, annoyance that the shop vac, the noise. Shop vacs are super loud. If you take a look at my uh, video on reducing shop vac noise by 50%, which I linked up above here, um, you'll see that it starts at around 95 decibels. So to do that, we're doing it, it's essentially really four layers of soundproofing. First one, which is your outer skin of the chamber. Your hardboard, eighth inch, by the big box door. The next thing we're utilizing is, in actuality, the next layer between here and here is going to be an air layer. But on top of this is this foam. We used to have this half inch poly foam, very soft, spongy. And on top of that, I'm using the moving blanket, which as you can see, has this padding material inside of 
two layers of nylon. And I expect to reduce the sound coming out of the shop vac to the point where you can have a normal conversation while the shop vac is running right next to you. So that's the goal. The foam here I'm using was easily cut with a razor knife. I found it helpful if I touched up the edges with the belt sander to keep them from fraying any farther. I use a standard thick two-sided tape to hold the foam to the hardboard. It gave me that nice standoff to give a good air gap between the foam and hardboard. Make sure you have a good pair of scissors when you're cutting the fabric. It really did give me a challenge with the cheap scissors I used. And any standard mounting spray glue will work fine. It really did stick well. Fabric, which has padding inside of it. This will reflect sound. Then you have the foam, as I mentioned, which absorbs anything that doesn't reflect off of the fabric. And in between here, which is really hard to see, is a little air gap. So with the foam, after it's done absorbing and slowing the sound, it has to overcome that air gap and then penetrate the hardboard. So that's, that's done. And this one actually wants to be over here. There we go. I find one of the most annoying things about shop vacs are those silly little casters that they give. So I replaced them with these nice four inch casters that you see here. Uh, I put the links for this and all the other materials that we use down below in the comments. So feel free, these are affiliate link. And for jobs like this, I found my dowel jig to be indispensable for a handy tool for drilling straight and square. Okay, so we're all done with the casters. I wanted to cover a few details before I got into the assembly so you can see them better. But real quick, this is the vortex top of the collection area. And this is uh, your basic five gallon bucket from the big box store. And what I've done, you can see here, is I've taken some gray PVC, some conduit. Uh, works fine. It's just the right size. I cut it at angle, and you can see how I've cut it right there. And I use that angle to trace an oval right here. Cut a hole in the bucket, insert, this is a 45 degree elbow. So I get a nice slope, and you can see how as this comes this way, it gives the debris that nice smooth arc. So when it comes into the bucket, it does this nice circle, drops down, instead of sp spiraling in and flying everywhere, only to be picked up by. And here we have our top piece. And you notice all my joints are caulked, both here and here, heavily caulked for seal. Now, the secret to my shop vac. This is not adequate for doing a vortex pickup. What will happen is, is if you only did a single bucket collection area, and you know what happens when you, uh, dust hits the floor, it poof, it goes up in the cloud. And it would be picked back up in the top. And I connect an additional bucket on the bottom and I do it with magnets. So that way, when I go to remove it, that's it. And voila, right empty. The top has some rubber seal that you can see here. And as soon as that shop vac turns on, this thing just sucks down tight, gives a great seal, works beautiful. One feature that I didn't give much thought to as I was doing my final assembly was the direction of the shop vac hose for the inlet to the on and off switch. It turned out that that was a pretty important relationship. As I put it together and started testing it out, I found I kept having to walk all the way around to turn that thing on. So 
pay attention to where the hose is in relationship to your on and off switch. It'll save you a lot of time in the use of your shop vac. Final assembly of the ultimate dust collection cart. We're all done. Got all the elements to it. And I have to say that uh, this cart has it all. So it not only is a efficient, effective dust collection cart, it has a lot of bonus features. So we talked about the three key elements that we want to accomplish. The three things were mobility and hard to see from that angle, but we have a nice four inch casters. We also took into account the Cyclone shop vac. So as you can remember, one of the goals that we had to do was to improve the efficiency of the shop vac so the dust filter wasn't clocking so frequently. So, there it is. One, two, three for replacing the, the bucket when you want to enter, excuse me, when you want to empty it. Take it. Magnets hold it in place. Good to go. By using the two different buckets, we're able to accomplish a more efficient collection of the chips so the material isn't getting back into the hose. I see a lot of dust collection of vortexes where both the intake and the outlet are in the top together and that cloud of dust is circulating immediately around there. And the third thing we we're trying to accomplish was the noise level. So you don't know how much of that you can hear but I can actually talk and be heard over the shop vac. I'm sure you hear that. And you can see we put some extra added features to it. So, we've also included a nice, handy, convenient way to store the tools. See through. So that way I always know exactly where my tools are. Bonus number two, what do you do with your hose? I hadn't thought about that earlier, but another pain that you, I frequently encounter is after I'm all done with it, the hose, as you can see here, is just flopping everywhere and it's not much use. It's getting in the way, so we incorporate a nice convenient hook. But wait, we're not done yet, because not every pile of dust requires a shop vac. We now have our onboard broom and dustpan for picking up. And last, but I believe most importantly feature, my coffee warmer. What dust cart would be complete without an automatic coffee warmer that keeps the coffee as long as it's warm as long as it's up there and as soon as I pick it up it automatically shuts off. So when you're all done with the cart and you're wondering what to do with the wire, the last feature of convenience that we put in play, storage of the wire. Like any good dust collector should, we have a test. Of course, we have a test. So we're gonna turn it around. Ooh. You might be able to see all the dust chips which are circulating down here in this half. That way, we don't have a dust cloud in the top half being recirculated back to the vacuum. And what's the time empty? Voila, it just comes right off. And there they are. And there you have it. There's our full bucket all over again. I hope you learned something from today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Question of the day is what else would you like to see incorporated into the Ultimate Shop Fat Cart? So, is there some other feature or some other bonus 
element that you'd like to see incorporated. Let us know in the comments down below and let us know if we forgot something. Love to hear from you. Leave us a comment down below and we'll get right back to it. So thanks for watching.